Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. This video is about these uh, Elderbrock E Street heads. Um, these are not stock. So as they came in, all the poor work had pretty much been done by someone else. So, but I have never had these heads ever come through the shop. So this is the first time for me. So I'm gonna show you some of the stuff. I'm also gonna tell you what happens if you cut out an intake valve to a two, uh, from a 202 valve to a 2055, what's it do on flow on this head? because that's all I did and also a valve job just to see what would change. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this head. This head, this Elderbrock E Street head, this was when Elderbrock put this out as a way to compete with the Chinese head. So this was like their cheapest head that they had made. Uh, and I thought, I want, I'm gonna obviously see some of these, but I don't think they realized they couldn't make it cheap enough to compete with at the time, Procomp. Now, now there's many more Chinese heads out. Like, um, you know, got the Assault, which is, um, pretty much the same as what everybody else runs, AFR enforcer heads, you have the DNA heads. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. But at the time, really the only Chinese head that was out was Procomp. So Elderbrock to kind of compete with that, they said we're gonna you know, offer an American made budget head and this was it. And I never saw it, probably because right after that, other um, aluminum heads started coming out. So you've already, if you watch my channel, you've probably already seen me flow a set of Procomp heads. And I'll go ahead, and go ahead and tell you, these are far superior. They flow considerably more, but they've also been modified. But I'm gonna show about some of the things I like and don't like about them. So um, you can always tell an Elderbrock head because it has an Elderbrock guide plates. But um, this is what it looks like this side. It comes with, you know, we got screw and studs, you got nice guide plates, bronze guides, obviously um, good choice. Um, but remember this head was meant to save money. So I'm, I'm just curious on what some of the stuff that they had done. So, let's take a peek. This is what got me. These chambers that you see here are very outdated. This is a horrible chamber design. And some of you guys have been hot rodding long enough will know that chamber looks a lot like the Elderbrock former RPM heads. They're on the small block Chevys. And you are correct. Many, 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 many years ago when Elderbrock had their performer RPMs, their chambers looked a lot like this, which was like, it almost looked like they took a double hump head and they said, hey, let's make an aluminum version of it. And that's kind of what they made. And that's kind of what this looks like. And I know some of you are like, that is not what an Elderbrock performer RPM head looks like as far as chamber rise. If you get a new one, it doesn't because this is a neural one. This is one I've had for a while, at least in 2008. This is a best number. If you look at the chamber, it's a different design. This is actually, even though it's really, really old, is the newer chamber design than this. However, if you look at the ports, although this has also been modified, so it's hard to tell, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, these ports are similar to these ports. Of course, that's also been modified. Uh, so it's hard to judge, but I'm gonna tell you, they're very similar. There's some things that they for sure did to save on costs, and one of them being the seat material. So these are your Performer RPM heads. Um, they used to be the more bu budget ones, but these to save money, they did different things. One of the things that they for sure did was, this is a ductile iron seat, and I love cutting these. AFR has about the same seat material, so does Profiler, so does Brodix. Um, Trick Flow does, last time I cut them, they did. These are the material. This is the best to cut, so it's the best to machine. Um, it actually is the better life for the valve too. Um, I love these type of seats and several companies use this. A cheaper seat material is what's in this. Now granted, they look nice and shiny, they've been cut. They're hard to cut because these are like a powdered metal seat. They're very hard, so you would think, well, that's great, it, it, it's hard, so it's gonna last longer. Yeah, it also beats up the valve more because one thing's got to give. So um, yeah, these are, I hate machining these every time. And even though I got my new seat guy machine, your cutter better be sharp or you're not going to get a round seat with these. And this is this powder metal stuff. The other disadvantage of this is on a ductile iron seat like this, when you have a tuning problem or something, they'll burn out. So parts will, uh, they don't necessarily chip out. They'll just um, burn. These powdered metal ones that are in these, they actually come out in chips because it's a harder material. It's also more brittle and it literally comes out in chunks. I'm not saying I, I don't have, again, this first one I've seen, but usually when you see powdered metal seats, they're the ones that chip out. Um, a good example like this type of seat 
is the same way that the uh, Procomp, which is a Chinese head, that's the way their seats look when they're machined and they'll chip. Now, obviously, I think Elderbrock uses a better material than what the Pro Comps are using, but it's not near as good a material as that. So probably to save cost over a long haul, they chose these seats. Now, this isn't uncommon. For instance, on Brodix's IK heads, they use this same seat material, but on any of their other heads, like their Dragon Slayers and pretty much everything else, they use that seat material. And the reason for it is it saves cost. Although I hate them, and I hate that seat, which I hate these seats. So anyway, there's one thing for sure it could save on cost. The other thing that you could obviously tell is the machining time. You see these round holes that are around the bolt, uh, push rod slot? That's where these are. Notice the RPM. Uh, the way I think it comes is, I'm fairly certain, they probably look like this to start off with. And what they did is they took an end mill and they just run it over on the machine. And you wouldn't think, so why don't they just do that? It's not that big a deal. It's machine time. So if you were to get this head off the machine quicker, uh, a company could make more money because they put another one on. So it's probably another way that they use to save money. So there's some obvious differences there. So definitely lesser seat material. I'm not so sure about the guide material, if it's the same as that RPM guide material. But that's it. I have no idea, though, why they chose this chamber, though. Because that molds they already have for this. It's not like it costs more to make the that chamber than it does this one whenever they're pouring it. It doesn't make any sense. So I don't know. I think maybe because they're like, if we make this head cheap and it's the same as that one, why would they buy the more expensive one? And that would be a good point. So the only thing really I think that's different with this is the chamber because the runners look the same. So... Let me flip it over and show you the exhaust portion of it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to do this one-handed because I really don't want to edit a video today. See the exhaust? See the exhaust? Now, this is how this one hasn't been ported, so you, the exhaust hasn't anyway. See how they have? That's another thing, but I can't tell because that one's not stock. But this is how they came stock. They would do this little machining here. I'm betting if you got those, it didn't have that machined just stay on time but you look they're virtually identical so there's that now i've wasted seven minutes of talking might as well show you what they float someone had ported these and i really think they just did a mild very 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 mild job but i gotta show you what they float because they actually do pretty good this is a 430 board uh signs bench let's see this is the stock ones and this is putting in the bigger valve and then redoing the valve job so if you look, I only care about four, six, and peak. At 400, it's 223 stock. And then it goes 257 at six, which is really good there. And then it peaks about 266 or 65. That's really, really not, really that, not that bad of a flow for this head. So it's, it's really good. So if you get these from the um, scrapyard or whatever, these are pretty good. These are better than any Vortec head. So if you're like, ah, I got my Vortec heads are better. No, they're not. They're not even close. So this is much, much better than many of the stuff that's out there. Um, granted, someone has worked them over, but I'm telling you from looking at this port work, anybody that watches my videos, if you pay attention on how I show you the port, you could do that. The exhaust side um, is 190, and then at four, well, sorry, I got it wrong, 168 at four, which is kind of low, and then uh, 198 at seven, and it peaks about two or three, not bad stock. Now, I think this guy just, he didn't redo the valve job. Whoever reported this did not redo the valve job at all. And he just did his work and, I mean, looked like very, very basic stuff. Just kind of cleaned up the casting, 60 grit stuff, and that's what he got. What I did is I cut it out to a 2055 intake valve. And the bigger reason is I got more of the angles in the valve job. So let me see if I can't tilt this head without making myself frustrated. There we go. I get more angles in by cutting this because it was really only three. And now I've got all five in here, and that helps out flow. Now, it doesn't help it all the way because the bigger valve, and that's another thing to point out. Let's just see if I can't find it here. Mm, this one. You see right here? That's my cutter hitting the chamber because it's shrouded on this side. So these are so thick through here that th my cutter is actually hitting the chamber on these. Now, if you notice, it doesn't do on this one next to it because you got a uh, core shift. So see how it's not there, but it's on that one. And on that one, barely. Um, but anyway, thought I'd show you that. Here's what it does after. At four, it's 226. That's a gain of three CFM. But look at five, 257, I gained almost 10. 270 now at six. And that's just a valve job. 
I didn't do any extra blending at all. Just the valve job, 270, and it peaks at 272. Look at the exhaust. This is, just, again, just the valve job. I went from a 168 to 177, gained 10 CFM. Um, and the peak, we went from 202 to 212. So it's again 10 CFM, all from a valve job. Um, did take a little bit longer to do because of these hard seats, but yeah, that's it. The valve job really seemed to help. So how much is the valve job worth? Uh, this one for sure worth quite a bit. And cutting out to the bigger valve, got the angles in, it's a win-win. Anyway, uh, I don't want to hold you guys up too long, but uh, if you get to see these in the marketplace or whatnot, they're not a bad head. It looks like they're pretty good. But like, I didn't do any of this work, just so you know. So all this that you see in the port, that that's the way it was done, whoever ported them. And I could tell you just from measurements and looking, it's not that big. You're like, no, how do you know it's not that big? You can measure across, but also know it didn't break through the head bolt hole right here, so it's not that big. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of the video. If you're like, where's the dyno stuff, man? I thought you was gonna do that. You talked about that on uh, Sunday. Yes, then it'll be next Sunday. I'll do another video on that. I try to do those on usually on Sundays or whenever. So look forward to that. Next thing, if you're not signed up to be a channel member, go to my website, wengines.com. Yes, it's yearly and yes, it's kind of expensive, but um, it also, you'll get a whole lot of stuff that doesn't really make videos not for a while. For instance, if you're a Mopar guy, you really should have been a, uh, a channel member because I just shared with them a cylinder head that's brand new to the market. Um, that it's, it's looking pretty, pretty good. So if you're a 440 Mopar guy, yeah, you, you should be a channel member. And also, I, it's $150 for a year, but I, if you are 16 to 18 years old, it's 20 bucks. And I forgot this because in YouTube, whenever you do your put out a video, for those that don't know, it asked if, is this made for a children? And I always click no. So then I got to thinking, that means when I said, you know, for the, anybody 16 to 18 years old, they probably won't get a chance to look at any of my videos because they're gonna be seen as minors when you click that the video is made for an adults, they never get to see the video. So if you know anybody that's in that age range, you might pass it on to them. And why am I doing this? Because the younger generation needs to learn. So um, I can't take this information with me, obviously, and instead of them getting bad stuff, it's better to that way. So uh, anyway, you guys, uh, remember I'm no Superman, you guys take care.